Okay. Uh. <coughs> Have you all seen this? How many roads must a man walk down before you can call him a man? Do you remember the author? No yeah. one. There's an answer to this. <laughs> many, <laughs> many, many. Uh, you have to get inspiration, and you have to be inspired to come on a new band that you know basically nothing about. And for me, it all started in Thorn in Holland in 1992. That's a long time ago. That conference was also famous for the, for the, you know, there was a big battle between the three superpowers <laughs> of the world that took place there. We had the United States of America, we had the just collapsed Soviet Union, and we had SM4ID. <laughs> And this is what went down. <laughs> I don't remember who won, but I know that Sergei, he was absolutely full of sweat. We see LB5, LBAQ, L5, LX, K1, RQG, sadly passed away. Grasse, white shirt and a tie in arm wrestling. <laughs> And, and we, we see the, the, the spectators with the cigarettes. It wouldn't happen. Yeah, it's just not a, not a, a anyway. Anyway, this was this was the inspiring moment, not this inspiring, moment, but the inspiring moment of this guy, Jim W seven W A seven C J O. He was at the time. He, he, he held a talk when he started talking about uh, TWT amplifiers. I had I came from HF and I had just started Moonbound. I didn't know what he was talking about. Uh, but he had some pictures, they, they weren't PowerPoint slides, they were pictures, and there, was a, there were a couple of things that, that really attracted me. The first one was that he was using Collins equipment to operate on 10 gigahertz. Unheard of. I had only seen, you know, these all sorts of wires and stuff hanging, like you had your amplifier hanging off the dish. The other thing was that he had this amplifier. And this is what he was talking about. He was talking about a big amplifier that he had acquired that wasn't giving out any power. And he sat on a scaffolding platform behind the, the amplifier, behind the dish. And he had, some, he had some potentiometer or something that he was adjusting, more or less a degree at a time. And he had a power meter. And every time he moved this little pot, the meter just, the needle just came slowly, slowly, slowly up. And then he adjusted one more <coughs> step, and the meter went bang. And Jim fell backwards from the scaffolding down on the ground. And for some reason, the, I don't know, the beam focusing or something in the TWT was, was perfect. And he had 300 watts output. And I thought, hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> I haven't seen that in 3-500. Three, three <coughs> And the third thing was that <coughs> he had his, his dishes in a cradle. And there were all sorts of adjustments. And he kept talking about the adjustment to get the, the shape of the parabola <laughs> proper. And, and obviously, an 80 meter dipole <coughs> can have a swing. <laughs> but a dish like this, I, I, I found it rather fascinating. And I said, I've got to do this. But inspiration comes from other places as well. And, and in this room, from Michael and Monica, and especially the 10 gig stuff that you dragged to Corsica and you dragged it to Poland mm -hmm. and you dragged it to Kaliningrad and I figured they can drag a 10 gig station around Europe and, and, and I gotta get something going at home <laughs> so feeling inspired <coughs> myself I gotta start something I had a satellite TV dish a 1.8 meter prime focus one of Ben's CKU's parabolic TV dishes, uh, and I was going to use that, and I had just sort of made my mind up how to mount it on a, on a, on a, on a uh, mast when a big storm 
Okay. And underneath all this rubble, there's a tree lying here. That is that dish. Oh, 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 oh. I thought it was a nice picture, but <laughs> it was totally smashed. Yeah. And what? I came in after going out and checking this, this damage and I came in and my wife said, why, why are you so sad? I said, well, something just scrapped my 10 gigahertz attempt. <laughs> so this was the first attempt and it really started, uh, it, it really was shut down before I got started. So I had to look for another dish. And the second attempt was <coughs> a little bit more successful. This is a fully, a, an aluminium dish, three meter dish. Uh, I got it from, I, I call it the territory up north. Hmm tell you why. Uh, and I built a mount for it. And really, this second attempt for me, uh, it actually resulted in a fully random CW, no internet connection, no chat board, <laughs> USO, <laughs> with okay one KIR. Uh, but the second attempt had issues. One of the issues was that I used a motorcycle chain uh, and a gearbox and a motor and so on. It was rather slippery. The whole dish was sitting on a yoke, uh, which was rather heavy. Uh, so there was always, a, it was sloppy. It was always moving back and forth. The second thing was that I built the elevation with a very, with, 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 it, it was just it was just not strong enough and, and uh, uh, it held the dish in, a, in an awkward position. And especially when the wind came, it actually bent the dish over so it got skewed. And a stew dish is, is not a good thing. And the, the, the third problem was that up in the territory where it came from, they had been using it as a shooting target. From a shotgun bullets. So I had been on that, you know, with a hammer for, 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 for many hours trying to get the shape back in. It's not really. Uh, but I figured, okay, I'll, I'm going to make an attempt. But I, I came home after an Arab group meeting. Whereas Denek had been talking about the mirror test. You remember the mirror test? Place mirrors around the circumference of the dish and look in the focus when you're, when you're beaming to the sun and see if you have a clear, uh, a clear sun right in the center, of the, in the focal point. Yes. Uh, it, or if it's fuzzy. Uh, Eddie helped Zdenek with, with a new dish and when, when Zdenek realized that his dish was, the, fo the focal point was dizzy. The dish was not in a good shape. So, uh, I did that test and, and I scrapped it. So, I figured, okay, the third attempt. I had a good friend of mine. He had a really, really nice dish, a really high precision dish, two meter uh, diameter. So, I figured precision over size. Uh, and I said to myself as well that because with the problems with the old dish was, was the distortion of the dish shape due to the weight of the feet. So in this case, uh, the, the, feed, the, the feed holder is, is basically sitting on the, on the back mount of the dish and the straps that you see uh, are just basically holding it so it won't wiggle back and forth. Uh, I got a, a one bit right. It's not, it's not one, of the, one of the nice ones that, that you described and that Michael has, but it's still a worm, worm that when I drive. Uh, I got a nice actuator. I'm tracking the moon with Hannes's tracker. Perfect. Uh, I had good moon noise. I had an, an S Elytra SSPA at the feed, but I had no echoes. And it, I, I sat there and I called for a whole contest. I called everybody, everybody I heard a year ago. No one heard me. And it turns out that this Pat's cable from the <laughs> PA to the waveguide switch uh, it was was uh, defunct. It was uh, not not uh, not okay. And the problem with the PA and that I don't have I, I measured power. I didn't measure power. I measured voltage from the SSPA. It puts out a voltage, uh, which is basically a reference to the power it, it puts out. But I wasn't measuring the power going to the waveguide. <laughs> So, okay, I fixed that. I still had good moon noise. Receive was okay, but I had weak echoes. So I said it was time to put one of those surplus TWTAs to use that I had acquired from a friend of mine. Uh, this is the 
the power supply, I had no manual, I had no schematic. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I turned to my good friend in England. They were manufactured in England. Peter, uh, Peter tried to help me uh, with some friends who had worked at STC, whether we could find some manuals, we couldn't. So the final option was to try to reverse engineer this molded uh, connector in the power supply and hope for the best. And bingo. I managed to find the right pins to, to feed this, this bastard with AC. And it came up and there was no smoke until there was smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Heavy smoke. <laughs> but it was just a tantalum uh, capacitor in the timer circuit, so I was able to replace that. But how do I compare? I had, a, I had an SSPA, Oops. and I had a TWT, and I had that running, and I had nothing to measure the power with. So I sat there, and I, I, I started looking at my Bird 43. I, I have to be able to measure power with a Bird 43 on 10 gigs. <laughs> but I had a 50 E slug, a thousand megahertz slug. And I had an old stinky uh, termination, you know, an oil filled termination. Uh, so that's what I did. I, I compared, and the, the meter read something. It read a, it, it, it did read something. So the reference was okay. You can see the, the SSPA, the solid state PA on the left, the bird reading with a 50 E slug, and with the TWTA. <laughs> I pinned the meter, so I said, okay, it's time to change. This is more power. I haven't got a clue how much power, but it's more power. <laughs> so finally, this is all assembled in the, in the PA box, uh, just behind the dish. Uh, and now I have the power sensor on the output of the amplifier in the waveguide going to the antenna. So I can, I can more or less see that the power is at least leaving the, the amplifier. Uh, Eddie was talking about a heater. He had a professional heater in the beacon box. This is my heater <laughs> to keep the moisture out. A 60 watt light bulb, <laughs> old style. Before EU decided you cannot use the old style. But this one actually produces 60 watts of heat <laughs> in, that, in that box. And this is monitoring the amplifier <coughs> in the shack and I, have, I, I can control uh, or I can monitor the helix current, the beam current, the output power at the wave, at the wave guide at least. So what are the safe beam and helix currents according to the manufacturer? Absolutely no idea. I have no clue. But this is ham radio. If it breaks, it breaks. I'll keep, I'll keep running as long as it, as long as, as long as it runs. Uh, I'll just keep running. And uh, for the moment, I'm doing quite well. I have about 1 dB of, of uh, moon noise, <coughs> 10 and a half dB of sun noise. Echoes are consistent, which is nice. I have acceptable tracking. The, 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 the problems are all mechanical. And I made some nice uh, random CW, EME, QSOs without any logger, without any internet connection, <laughs> without anything <laughs> in the, in the latest news <laughs> content. <laughs> So the conclusion, you have to get inspired. There, there are <coughs> obstacles. I knew absolutely nothing about, about microwaves, and, and certainly not, not 10 gigs. But the inspiration, come, it, it comes from somewhere. And uh, just use the inspiration to go forward. Just like you. Just decide. I, I, I stop working troll I do something else. I, I go on the uh, Mechanics are just as important as electronics on, in 10 gigs. The DL0 SHF beacon, it is absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. You work on the tracking, you work on the receiver, you work on, on whatever you need to work on, and you've got that beacon uh, that the pad is, is, is uh, it's on the air all the time. And last <coughs> but not least, suck up all the knowledge and advice from specialists. What they hand out, it's, it's invaluable, and it's for free. And especially, <coughs> that's you guys. We've all, we've all been at these meetings, and it's on the web, and you can find it anywhere. Uh, all sorts of info uh, for free. That will give you help when badly needed. So, we had a question from Bob Dylan. The answer is now yes, 
Manny, I've been down a bunch of dead ends, but I'm finally there. I'm a man. <laughs>